Let's welcome Adam. He's going to talk about free Boolean algebras. Everybody, everybody loves free Boolean algebras. Who doesn't? I, yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Adam Rosine. Uh, I'm very happy to be able to talk again. Uh, this, this subject kind of came up, uh, like a lot of things, just kind of uh, as something I found on the internet. And I was like, ooh, I wonder if I could, whoa, my god. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I don't know what to do. Um, I feel like I'm under the spotlight. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I work at a small company called Inner Product. Uh, we help people. We train people. We mentor people. We do it remotely. We're your nerd on as a service. Um, we we can build stuff for you. We do everything. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about something uh, very fun and I'll try and do it as as quick as I can. So uh, I want to share my, one of one of my favorite test outputs. It's probably my favorite. Um, yeah, this one. Uh, it, it happens to the best of us. I, and when, when does this happen? This happens when, you know, it fails and we haven't really, we specified some Boolean expression that says this must be this other thing and this and this and or this and this. And then the computer's very good and it runs the thing and says, nope, it's not. Uh, yep. Um, so, you know. I don't like that one. Um, thank you. <laughs> I like whiskey. Or, uh, uh, so what, what do we do? I mean, there's, there's like matching. Uh, we, we deal with these things all the time. We, and we kind of deal them with them in different ways, in different contexts. So, you know, we use some test framework. It has some matching, matchers kind of library where we kind of express things in, in somewhat of a more natural language. Um, we have regular old Boolean functions and expressions. We have um, some more complicated data structures like in cats, like cats validated to sort of capture some of these Boolean things. We have type, you know, in, we put it into the type so we have cats validated. We have um, ethers where we use the left as sort of the, the bad and the right as the good. Um, so they're everywhere. Uh, how do we encode them? How do we, how do we reuse them? Are we, are we sort of splattering our, our logic, uh, our sort of Boolean logic all around our program in, in our tests across everywhere? Um, are they documented? Do we know what it is? Um, you know, you have your requirements and is it really that? I don't know. Uh, so it's a mess. Um, I don't really have a good, this is sort of a, I, don't, I wouldn't say I have any answers, but I found this and it, it seems like a good direction to maybe explore some more. So I wanted to share it with you all. Okay, so what are we gonna do when there's a mess? We refactor, yeah! Okay, uh, so here's Boolean functions. Uh, so sort of the example domain is just something made up. So uh, your age, you have to be at least 13. So, you know, is the number greater than 13? Greater than or equal to 13. And names, you know, you can't have an empty name. Uh, so a string has to be non-empty. And so if we wanted to combine these in expressions and compose these Boolean expressions, we just make a new function and we and them together. Everyone does this all the time. Maybe not as a function, but you, you know, you just use uh, amp amp. Uh, and we can run it on some, some inputs, and uh, 13 is greater than or equal to 13, and Martin is not empty, et cetera, et cetera, and we get our Boolean values out. No problem. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to reify. Uh, as I like to joke, we ify again. Um, so that's when we turn sort of functions into data. So rather than having these Boolean functions, uh, we're just going to say what we want to do. So in my world, in my little tiny world of predicates, uh, you know, you, you have to be at least 13 and you have to have a non-empty name. So notice that we have the, uh, we sort of take an argument, but we, we don't say how we're going to do this. But we're going to add it later. Um, so we make an interpreter for this. Um, is someone leaning against the wall? <laughs> Okay, I'll go with it. Can you still read it okay? That's what matters. How about you all? Can... Okay. No? I heard a no. I'll just keep going, I guess. Um, 
oh, it's really bright. Um, so we, we turned our Boolean expressions into data. This is what we want to do. So we have to actually run it to get a Boolean back out. And we do it with pattern matching. We have an interpreter. And so we just move our little Boolean function into the, the match. So we have things a little bit more separated now. Um, but we, we, can't, we can't get our conjunction. You know, we didn't implement it. We just have this. So how do we get that back? Well, we just do the same trick. We, uh, we add our method. That creates a new sort of piece of data. We, it's our AND. We add it to our, our uh, algebraic data type. And then, we, uh, and then we interpret it. So there's a new case. It's, it's the ones that we wrote. And then there's AND. And we can do OR and we can do NOT the same way. So now, now we're happy. Now we can uh, take some of these primitive uh, predicates, the ones that we defined, and we can and them and or them and not them, and build the expressions and then evaluate them and we get the same answers out. So, well, so if, you, if we look at this and, and we add the, uh, the and and the or and the not, um, well, what if, that's like, all, that's like Boolean algebra right there. I have and and not. Uh, what, if, what if I took out, <clears throat> took out my special stuff? The, my predicates, the at least 13, the non-empty name. What if I just remove that? That would be like fact factoring out the, uh, the algebra. So let's do that. Let's, let's take out anything special, anything that's not Boolean algebra. Oh, we're changing moods again. <laughs> so. <laughs> this is where it gets real. So this is just, uh, this is just a free Boolean algebra. I just called it freebie. <laughs> um, and it just has, we can do true. Uh, well, we have our operations. And uh, what, we have a way into the system so we can, we can wrap any value of any type in, and sort of lift it into this Boolean algebra. Uh, and then once we have it, we can and it, nor it, not it. Uh, we have some constants, true and false. But we didn't, uh, we didn't implement run here. So, so what do we do? Well, uh, how do we interpret this algebra? We have, we have a series. We can take our values. We can pull them into this data structure, this algebraic data type with ands and ors, and, and then do things with ands and ors and nots. Uh, well, we just use our structural recursion pattern. This says, I have an algebraic, algebraic data type, and I want to turn it into something else. Uh, so here's our run method. And so we just pattern match. So I'm, uh, we say this match, so, well, I don't really know what to do in the first case. But if I'm true, I return Boolean true. If I'm false, I return Boolean false. If I have two sub-expressions that are and together, I and their values. Same thing for or and not, I just recurse. Um, so I got, I, we got most of the way there. So no matter what I, kind of A I put into this thing, I can, do, I can do Boolean algebra, except I don't know how to get, I, know what to, I don't know what to do with this value of type A to get it back out, because I'm supposed to produce a Boolean here. So how do we implement pure, or the interpretation of pure, really? Um, well, we make it the caller's problem. I don't know how to do it. So you tell me, person who calls run, uh, you tell me how to interpret a value of A and turn it into a Boolean, and then the evaluator will just do it. So this, uh, this run method knows how to do all the Boolean algebra, and, but sometimes there's going to be a value of something of a type that it doesn't know. So it's like, you help me. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, so here's the story as we have it so far. We have our custom predicates. This is says what we want to do. Um, and we've separated the evaluation of these into something, uh, something different. So if you give me a predicate, I can produce a Boolean, and this is how I do it. So together, uh, we can compose expressions together. We can say, must it be, you know, is the value 13, at least 13, is the, is the, name, is the string Martin non-empty? and only return true if both of them are true, and then run the thing. And it says, yes, that is true. And when the conditions don't hold, it says, no, false. Ta-da. 
So what, what, did, what was that whole sequence of refactoring really doing? Um, we took something that we had a very, where we had Boolean functions. It's a very sort of low level uh, representation. It's, it's sort of as low as we can go. We're using the language itself. We have functions. It says this is how you turn something else into a Boolean. And we use the, the normal Boolean logic operators on the Boolean type. And we sort of pulled away from that. And so by the way we did that is we reified them into this algebraic data type. It says these are the things that we can do. Uh, and then once we turn these expressions into data, we needed a way to get uh, to interpret them back into a Boolean to actually like run the expressions. So we wrote an interpreter. Um, this had this property of separating what we wanted to do from how we do it. Uh, so that, and then it said, well, it didn't really matter what my um, special instructions were, the predicates that I made, you can make your own. It doesn't matter what type they are. We can take a value uh, and use this pure method to take a va any value of type A and lift it into this free B of A. And then we can start doing ands and ors. So it's, you, get, you, know, you get Boolean logic for free on this thing. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. And then to get something back out, we need a little bit of help, um, but we can interpret the structure uh, back into our in, back into a boolean. Any questions so far? Is that, that's good. Okay. Um, so this is called the free boolean algebra um, because what you get you get a boolean algebra no matter what a is. So you can take uh, you can take booleans if you wanted, but you, we just made up a data type. We made this uh, predicate data structure. And all of a sudden, you get the ability to call and and or and not and compose them as much as you want. And then as long as you can turn them into something like a Boolean on the way out, you can reduce them down and, and run them. It's free. There are other free things. You might, you know, there's the free monad, the free blah, 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 blah. They all work the same way. You can follow this process. OK. So now, now that we have this. Uh, this thing that can wrap up anything and make it look, make it, uh, make it available to do these Boolean operations. Uh, maybe there's other things we can do. Maybe we can abstract a little bit more. Yes, I anticipate myself. So uh, we, can, in, we can go from A to free B of A, but when we go out, when we run the thing, can we, can we turn this thing into something besides a Boolean? Well, we can, um, and we're going to use the type class pattern. So instead of translating A into a Boolean, we're going to translate A into B. And if B has a Boolean structure itself, so you can imagine the Boolean type has a Boolean structure, so that, that would work. As long as it's Boolean-ish, uh, then we can do this too. And it'll be clear why we want to do this. Um, but what's nice is we have our nice ecosystem. This is already implemented in the uh, type level algebra library. Yay, thank you. Um, so this is a type class for uh, Boolean algebra. So it says, well, it's the, it's the Boolean algebra for some type A. Um, so if you have an a, a type A, this is the zero. So uh, zero is sort of paired up. Um, I'm going to get confused. So I always get them wrong. That's why I have a computer to do the Boolean algebra for me, because I don't remember. Um, there's a zero, there's a one. This corresponds to sort of true and false. You can and things together, or them, take the complement, which, which would be not. Um, so it works for, you can imagine what this, the, an instance of this type class would be for, for when A is Boolean. But other things could possibly have this interface. So we might as well generalize to get this. So if we change our interpretation, our run method, to uh, translate an A into a B, as long as B has a Boolean algebra, it comes out pretty nice. So whenever something is true, if we encoded true, we just map it into the one of the algebra, false goes to zero. And we, use, we just recursively use the methods of the Boolean algebra um, to unwrap the, the compositions. And so we, if we wanted to just re reuse this interface for Booleans, we can, uh, we can import the, algebra, the type class instance for Boolean. 
and we can just run what we had before, and we get the same answers out. So we have a, a little bit more general interface. We can take an A to any B as long as the B itself has a Boolean algebra, uh, and, and go on from there. So we're sort of working our way to more and more generality. So one really interesting thing is that this free B container itself is a Boolean algebra. So this is kind of weird. You've got to turn your head sideways a little bit. Um, but sort of what that means in practicality is if I have a free B of A and run takes a function from A to B, if I choose B to be free B of A, I will produce, I can get a function that goes from a free B of A to a free B of A. So I can rewrite my Boolean expressions with an evaluator because free B itself is a Boolean, uh, Boolean algebra. And I'll show you how, how that can work. Okay. So we, we wrote an interpreter for our example predicates uh, using outputting Boolean. Here's some other examples we can use. So, okay, we can, we can reproduce regular functions in doing ands and ors and nots. What else can we do? Um, the first thing we, you should always do is write the pretty printer. So we're going to interpret a Boolean expression uh, into a string. So I need, uh, if I was going to run, if I just call run, I need to give it a function that takes um, my type and turns it into a string. And I need a Boolean algebra for string itself. That sounds weird. How can I do that? Well, it's not too hard because um, we can just sort of what false goes to, to the string false, true goes to the string true. We can build up a string that you know has the, the ampersand ampersand in it um, of of the other expressions. So then. Uh, so this is a bit of um, implicit class extension. So we can, we can have a new pretty method named after John Pretty. So if I had my predicate that was the, an the conjunction of both of my other predicates, and I say, well, this is how you turn at least 13 into a string, and this is how you turn a non-empty name predicate into a string, and if I run that, then I get the string version of my conjunction predicate. Pretty cool. You want to try it yourself. All right, here's another example. Uh, so we can normalize expressions. So in Boolean algebra, if you, um, if you and anything with true, it's really just the whatever, whatever the other one evaluates to. I think someone else had that, um, showed off that property. I can't remember which. Um, uh, an even easier one would be like, if you and anything with false, well, that's just false. If you or anything with true, then that's always true. It doesn't, you, don't, you don't even have to evaluate the other branch. So we can normalize expressions. So if somebody, for some reason, wrote something uh, where, where you had these constants, you can remove them. Uh, another one you could add that I don't have here would be, you know, not not should just be whatever. You can undo not not, and it just goes away. So we kind of show our truth table here. If I take true and true and I normalize it, I get true. And true and false, and I get false, 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 and I can normalize these expressions. So remember that, that this isn't evaluating yet. This just builds up an, an, an expression. This is the or of true and true. And only when we call normalize um, does this function actually run. So it's, it's not really, it's not a trick. I'm not trying to trick you. Like, yes, I know true and true is true, so. Even cooler, um, we can partially evaluate Boolean expressions. So this would be like, um, I, uh, I have a whole set of predicates that I have declared, but right now, I only know how to um, evaluate three of them. And for the other ones, I don't quite have enough info yet. What expression would pop out if I partially evaluate just what I know so far? Uh, so the way this works <coughs> uh, is uh, I'm going to run my expression. My function says, OK, I'm going to turn an A into something else. What I'm going to turn it into is another tree, essentially, another, another data. 
So I'm going to evaluate my partial function uh, that produces an option. When I fold on an option, uh, the first value is if my option is none. So if my partial function um, didn't match anything, I'm just going to wrap up my expression back up into, a, into uh, the free Boolean because I didn't do anything to it. So what, ki what came in is the same th thing that goes out. Um, but if, I, if my function did produce something new, if I said, yes, I, I'm going to do something with this, uh, then, you know, depending on what it was, I'm going to replace that sub-expression with its evaluation. If my, if my sub-expression was true, I'm going to wrap it up as a true, and if my sub-expression was not true, I'm going to wrap it up into a false. So if I only define one of my two predicates in this, in this sort of toy example, uh, I have this expression, um, I have to be at least 13 and you have to, uh, Martin has to be non-empty and I partially run that expression and then normalize it to get rid of any trues and falses if I can. Then it correctly says, well, okay, I, I only know how to check this sort of subtree. And yes, 13 is at least 13, so that will turn into a true. And then when we normalize that, the ch and with a true is always the, whatever the value of the other branch is. So then it, we get, we get the, uh, just the other one. So I can partially apply, just like when you partially apply functions. If a function has more than one arguments, you can say, well, here are some of the arguments. And what you get back is a function that takes the rest of them. So this is sort of the same thing. We have a, we have a, a, a tree of, of Boolean expressions, and we say, well, this subtree, uh, you, can all, you can change that subtree, and what you get is, is the remaining part. And then you can, just, you can use this pattern over and over again. I was trying to think of some good examples. Um, you can perhaps translate these, these free Boolean expressions into cat's data validated or some other kind of data structure. We'd have to figure out how to, do the, uh, how to make them a Boolean algebra, but we could probably do it. Uh, we can generate more complicated documentation. We could produce some better matchers for the tests so we don't get the true is false sort of thing. Um, it's sort of internally how all, the, all of these matchers work. They're doing this double duty job. They, they're expressing what you want to do and also how at the same time. Uh, and maybe there's some other ways to do things too. So what have we learned? Um, we can, we can use this very, this pattern that happens over and over again in functional programming, the interpreter pattern, and it gives us a lot of benefits. And what it's all about is separating the, the form of things from how to evaluate them. So for in the world of Boolean functions and Boolean expressions, we can pull out sort of what we want to do and how we want to combine them with ands and ors and nots. Put them into a common form and then we can evaluate them in, in different ways for different uses. And we can do this with this free Boolean algebra thing. And it's a very mechanical process. Like you can follow the same refactoring that I did. You can just write out the methods, reify them, blah, 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 write an interpreter, some, 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 something, and you'll have one of these things. And then you can translate them, then you can write multiple evaluators. Uh, then you can do whatever you want. So I, I'd be really interested in hearing if this inspires anything in you or like you see some deficiencies and be like, aha, maybe this will help a little bit and maybe we can develop some, some, some ideas together. Um, but, so that, but that's it. Um, thank you very much. Happy to take any questions now or later. Thanks, Adam. Are there any questions? Is the, is, is the light person going to zap me? Um, in normalize, how complicated can you make some of those normalizations? Like, could you put De Morgan's laws into there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how do you... Uh -huh. How do you know that it will terminate? The you don't. Normal? Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, there's probably a way you could know, but I mean, I think there's probably some, uh, well, you need to, e each step needs to be an actual reduction. If you're introducing new terms, then that would be bad. But sort of if you can, you would by inspection show that 
you're not making new things. You're only, you're only keeping what you have or getting rid of things. And that, that would be a sort of standard argument to make. Is the goal ultimately to have disjunctive pieces, or what's well? The... I, that that was my uh, stretch goal that I did not complete. But there's like con there's different normal forms for these things. So uh, one of them is the conjunctive normal form, and there's its inverse, the disjunctive normal form. Uh, and there's a whole body of research about these things and the running time of the, you know, how complicated it is. NP, it's NP hard something something something, and um, th there's a lot of research about it. So it, I would be It'd be cool to, to write it. It'd be cool to write it for fun, maybe. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that helps. Thank you. Any other questions? The what? The pretty. The pretty? Yeah. Did I make a mistake? Yeah. I'm. Um, I'm just curious. Like this doesn't seem like it's lawful to me, but it seems like you could just implement it um, similar to how you. It's uh, not lawful, do the no. Okay. Yeah. But, but you could do it the same way you do like normalize or something, right? Where you just like have pretty bool take an ADA string and then returns a string. So it's just like a new, like you don't end up with a bool string instance. Or like how you do run. But instead of uh -huh. it being ADA, ADA boolean, it would be ADA string. And I think it would be just as, as useful. But I just look right, at this try, and I feel I like... Trust, I, like, I trust uh, Greg on this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I just wanted to see. Yeah, it's a I bit rough. It's not, it's not a real bool because like... Uh, uh, and should be, you know, commutative in, in this example. And, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Um, but yeah, I think, I mean, this stuff is really... The cool. general idea of it, yeah. yeah. Any, uh, uh, any Boolean algebra can also be a, uh, a ring, so you can translate it into that world. Oh, I just want to put the references, because I got most of this from this guy, uh, Chris Stuckio, Wingify. It's pretty old, uh, older thing, but it's a really good blog post. And, uh. Uh, yeah, so your original um, slide was the true is not false. Yeah. So how would the test results look using these predicates? Uh, well, you, you know, I think uh, we, we want them to look, uh, we'd have to, s I guess there's two parts. So the first part is, you know, we need to say, well, what would be some really great test output? I haven't seen a satisfactory answer to that. Um, you know, so you, you want, if everything's working, you don't want a bunch of crud on your screen that just, just scrolls by and you can't find anything. Um, but then the usual pattern is you, 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 you put some raw um, Boolean expression and, and everything passes. And only when things fail and it gives you this nasty message, you're like, oh, well, now I need to put more context into my, uh, my test. And so you end up breaking up your... Uh, something like your, your, your Boolean expression into parts so you can see which part failed. Um, so it would be, the way you would do it, it would be similar to the, the pretty printer. You would, uh, you would have your, you sort of get the, the composition, the pretty printing of the composition for free and all you need to do is specify how to pretty print your particular thing. And you could visualize, you could visualize it as, as, it as a string, you could output a, a dotty, you know, graph viz kind of thing. Not, not Scala dotty, but you know, dot, the other one, the old one. Um, it'd be nice to be able to, to have multiple ways of expressing these conditions and sort of see, see where in that tree it failed, for example. Uh, does that sort of somewhat help? Any other questions? All right, thanks, Adam. Thank you.